Okay guys, this is the Capture the Flag game that you wanted me to take a look at. Off the start, what you're going to see is we get slayed out, except for the one guy who uh, goes trench. I, I didn't even notice that he was going trench before. That's retarded. Um, so yeah, we all die. And they immediately make a push for rocket side. Spur is coming up behind them, so he might throw a wrench in that, but... Spoiler alert, he won't. They immediately go to get this flag out. Blue Tony flag can't taken. know that because of the communication from Rai. But you see how he decides to just pull the flag and go? I'd say that's a smart play because Coney is already bottled up here. And Coney's dead. They just got the flag out faster. Sean, again, is walking into a four-on-one and dies. And I can't rewind, but Ryan was slow to overextend up this spawn. And here, this, this stopping and backing down Red carrier spotted. is definitely uh, no good. Red team what score. we needed there was a touch to buy time for the rest of our team to show up and help, and for that kill to matter. Uh, because they wouldn't have been able to return it if we got the flag and just got a couple shots on him. Coney could have finished the kill pretty easily, and uh, Spur would have had time to get over here and help with Cran. Your opponents have scored. Instead, they get flag right at the beginning. Blue carrier spotted. Oh, pocket king. Blue Seven flag sucks. taken. Look at that. They've already pulled out a second flag and got it all the way up here because they knew that they were set up for a possible double cap. Now, admittedly, they didn't have this flag as in the bag as uh, they probably thought, but it was definitely a possibility. And at the very least, you know, even though they got uh, killed over here getting this flag in, they've got a flag out, which will make it more difficult for us to score. Red carrier spotted. So Red Coney that gets this returned. one out going towards Trench, I think that's smart. Uh, doing the ground pound route wouldn't really work with guys S3. Red flag reset. Red flag taken. So let's see. Red For some spotted. reason they throw the flag out here Red and completely whip their rocket. Blue so Pocket King gets a return that we really do not deserve. Flag reset. And Coney is going to be Blue able to carrier this one spotted. In. Blue team scored. As you can see. Blue flag taken. They've got us all dead. And they're just going to run it out trench while they bottle it up inside of a uh, cave. Now they make a couple mistakes, and this time we overextend a little bit better. Red flag and Coney gets a touch here. The only issue I have with this is that Coney tries to throw the flag out and run it. The biggest investment, like the biggest time saver that you get is the first throw. That just forces them to win their fights rather than, you know, just put the flag in regardless of whether they win. And to go out and actually return this flag. Throwing it a little bit farther doesn't help with the fight part or with the return part. It only helps with the how far they have to go out in order to do that part. So it's much less efficient than the first throw. But I would just pick this up and try and w increase your likelihood of winning the fight. That's the highest yield play for Red there. carrier spotted. Blue carrier spotted. So we kind of get slayed Red out. For carry. some reason they threw the flag over here towards Trench, so they completely screwed up, and Sean is going to go and get this one. Return. Red flag and both returned. teams are going to return, but you, they, they should have captured that. So here, Blue flag. you don't need to play fast right now. Rockets are coming up in 13 seconds. Your spawns are coming up. Just keep Blue people backed reset. off. Get some damage on anyone who tries to get up into seconds. a strong position. Keeping Nick off of you is smart, rather than dealing with S3. But leaving the Rockets right now is not. We could have waited to make this push and got a rocket launcher. Now what's going to happen is we're gonna kill everybody, except Cran. We're going to pull this flag, but as you can see, your teammates are, are both pushing this way. You've got to push with them. You pull the flag towards your slays because kills bias spawns away from a position where elbow is completely open right now. Instead, we're going to run it over here and not get shield back and get punched out. And as you can see, their spawns were over here because Cran was the one who got away. This other guy who we're just killing now was the respawner. Red flag returned. Rye's setting up Red here, flag reset. which again, if you've got Rye covering you on S3, we want to be running this to snipe side. So Rye's looking for people, can't see the time though. Both die. They're going for the flagpole already. You guys should be spawning cave. 
spawn cave. They're about to take this flag out. They've got rocket support on elbow. Blue so flag taken. Red yep, carrier spawned. Take it out towards trench again. Smart play by them. As you can see, Coney has spawned under the base and is running down here. But they're going to run out and grab them. So initially we thought that was hysterical, but this is just something that we have to expect. If we get that bottom base spawn that we kind of want, we've got to play a little bit smarter about waiting to find the flag carrier rather than jumping out and getting caught by shit like this. As you can see from their flag route, when you pull the flag here and people are spawning inside of the cave, you immediately cut off all of their sight lines on you once you get here. You go up here, they can't see you, they can't see you get here. Okay, maybe they can see you. If they get S3, sure, they can see you. If they get DMR, sure, they can see you. But one person at Top Rockets, if they're smart and they don't drop down, one person here at Top Rockets can deal with both of those. I can back down anybody who wants to go up there. I can stay scoped in and five them while they have to hit a shot on a flag carrier who's jumping, thrusting, and ground pounding right over here. If you hit this ground pound right, you can land it on the other side of this wall here as opposed to in the trench here, and if you're able to land it on this side, you cut off the most dangerous spot. The most dangerous spot that's left, I should say, because the only place they can go is S2, where Kitty Squad and uh, Matchmaking Friends appear to be right now. That's where they can throw this grenade on you and kill you. As soon as you get here, that threat is significantly lower. You can start running the flag up. And as you can see, our team is just not in a position to get up and get in touch before they're able to put the flag in because that trench Red run is fast. Even though they fuck up and they all die because they had shit support from bottom mid instead of being top rocks, they're able to get it in because it's just faster than Your opponents you can do have game. scored. So Red November's flag gonna taken. try and throw this one out. Sniper rifles ready. But he had no support because our team was also basically all dead. So we're over here again. Red flag reset. The game is neutral right now, but for some reason we're all splitting our attention on different people. Tony went S3. We didn't just like put pressure Blue on them flag where taken. they were spawning. Red the carrier spotted. And we didn't do anything to uh, stop them from from returning the flag either, or punish them for it. We got to be better about getting the sniper behind the other two players. The other two players play forward. Keep the people in the back of the base away so that the sniper can stand somewhere on S2 and pick off whoever's in, in uh, trench. Eliminated the carrier. Now here again, you see how fast they are to get flagpoles. Um, that's definitely something that they're doing well. This is kind of the one time where they ran it the wrong way straight towards you guys where you're spawning. And that's why it's successful. Still, we're pretty cautious about this. We've got a couple kills, but we wind up with Coney Blue below the base. Ride fighting alone over set. here. We've completely skipped over the kills that we needed on this side. Pocket respawns over here. And because we're slowed down here and someone has slipped the net, he's going to go out and pull the flag again. Blue flag taken. Okay, so this one, uh, Coney needs to be. Just back here, blocking the spawn, scoping with the sniper. Or excuse me, back back here, really. Where you can see this guy right as he comes around the elbow. Using this camera is hard. Don't judge me. Uh, you can see the guy as he comes around the elbow. You can see anybody going top rocks and shoot them in the feet. Or you can shoot anybody going trench. As you guys push through here, again, if we had had a more methodical push, we wouldn't have a guy stuck over here. We would all have been flying through here with our sniper supporting from cave. Red flag taken. So instead we get some kind of chaotic shit. They've got their flag out, but he's gonna die because he's alone. Red fighting carrier two spotted. People and running the Blue wrong carrier way away spotted. From his teammates. Like the, I mean, the fact that they have a flag out right now isn't really a threat because it's Glock and he's stuck on his own. Where yet he can't get up to help him. So overall, I'd say the problem so far isn't really that they're so fast. It's that we're not punishing Blue them for the stupid return. shit that they're doing. Blue flag reset. And to an extent, they are getting away with some stuff because they're doing it faster than we are. Blue where we're slow and imprecise with where we pull the flags, they've 
had a little bit more success with pulling it the right direction. Okay, uh, good snipe. You're too weak to challenge that though. We also could have just kept that guy off of the elbow and, and killed him from the other side. We completely leave this guy on the pyramid to live. For no reason. Still alive. You are an back. excellent diversion. Oh, wait, no, we got him. All right, I'll take that. But we stalled out for no reason on their DMR in like the one spot where they could shoot us, and they're being smart and OEing right away. While we're still just kind of lost down here, trying to get our shields back. Kind of Red flag taken. Disastrous little fiasco there. Everyone's looking the wrong way when Coney pulls this, so he gets shot. Blue in the back flag a taken. Bit. Blue carriers. Again, we're just it's it's this stuff where like Ryan is alone in the cave while they're all overextending. We're trying to play this position now, but we're playing it way too late for it to have any effect. Coney is running right into these guys, and he gets naded because he didn't uh, properly bait the flag and thrust through this grass area. They're immediately running over to return it, and there's nothing we can Red do. Flag While again, they've ran the flag out towards their support on the rocket side. Red flag reset. And one. Red team score. Your opponents have scored. So yeah, guys. I don't know. It's a uh, it's our imprecision that allowed them to play that so fast and still get by us. Because their plays weren't like great or anything. We just weren't in a position to punish them for any of the shit that they tried to get away with. Um, we had good opportunities and you guys would have won this game if you had got the even just the, the pull the snipe side where you had your team was flowing through, you killed them all on a uh, on cave except for the one guy under the base. If if you guys do that one and just run towards Rye where your where your anchor is, I think you guys would have won this game. Because even if even if Coney died there, which you don't necessarily have to die if you do a nice little soaring jump or something while getting your shields back and someone challenges first on the guy under the base, it was one shot, would have been easy to take out. You guys get that flag in and you win the game. And then they're you know the overextend at the beginning of the game. You might have been able to save that flag. Um, and there were also a couple times where they almost got away with stuff that, again, if you guys hadn't let them get away with it, probably would have gone better. Uh, God, I hope that sentence made sense. I'm thinking of stuff, but I'm not really explaining which, which time I was thinking of very well. And I'm tired because I already worked a 12-hour shift today. Anyway, guys, hopefully you can see that, that it's more about putting it together smoothly and running the flag the right way to ensure that your flag caps go in and just not getting split up and disorganized and letting a single person slip through the net at a, uh, pretty much every given moment. That you need to move methodically and like rule out these positions rather than leaving someone alive in grass or leaving someone alive in, you know, on top rockets or leaving someone alive on, on pyramid, like at the end of the game there. It's just those those little things that always let someone slip through, get a touch, and just start running the flag out. Um, so yeah, that'll do it. Thanks, guys.